Like many, I'm a big fan of the Witcher 3 game, so when a friend asked if I could make her a LARP safe dagger based on Ceres, I was more than happy to have a go. Here's how I did it. I began by settling on a design and printing out a template to the scale that I needed. I then carefully traced around the template with a hobby knife, scoring an outline into the cardboard. I cut the template into cardboard so that it has a little substance and I can kind of hold it and feel the size. Once I'm happy with the rough size and shape, I measure the core, which needs to be at least two inches from the tip and one inch from the hilt. I'm using a 10mm carbon fibre rod for the core. I take what I'm going to cut and rotate as I do so to ensure that the fibres are cut rather than frayed. I then round the tips with the Dremel. Make sure you wear gloves and a mask. Carbon fibre dust is very unpleasant. I then give the entire core a little sanding. This will help the glue bond the foam to the core. Always double check against your template to ensure you have enough overhang. The foam is Polyprop CF65, which is a high density foam, much like a yoga mat but with a little more durability. I trace the template onto the EVO foam, adding a little thickness as I go. Essentially, I'll be making this dagger using three foam copies of the template, with the core inside the middle one. You can do this as a complete template. Because of the strange shaped handle on this dagger, I decided to keep the blade and handle separate. If this was simply a cosplay prop, then you could keep it nice and thin, exactly like the template. As this needs to be LARP safe, it needs a little more cushion. Check the size as you go. Cut three copies of the template into the foam. The middle one is about one centimeter thicker to help with the shaping. Cutting foam dulls the blade really quickly, so keep a sharpener handy and use it. Then you want to measure the middle of the cutouts. Mark the tip where the core will end. Going five millimeters each side of the middle gives you the area we need to cut out for the core. Keep checking the fit and overhang throughout the process. I wrap the tips of the core with hockey tape. This increases the bond between it and the foam and it prevents movement. There are many ways to protect the core from damaging the foam over time. In the past I've tried Kevlar, leather, denim, various methods of wrapping, but I settled on this technique using pleather that I got from TTC Craftworks on YouTube. This seems to be very durable and will likely outlive the latex without consuming too much material or time. I'm using Alpha Thixafix as my glue, but most contact cements do a good job. Apply it thinly over the core and inner area of the foam. Also coat the pleather strips and the foam either side of the core tips. Let this dry for 5 or 10 minutes, and when it's touched dry, carefully press the tip into the top of the foam and work your way down either side of the core, pressing as you go. Then press on the pleather to cover the tips on either side to prevent lateral movement. These aren't stab safe, but the flexible tip is there to prevent accidental injury when you get way too into it and you're doing a bit of role playing. Coat each side in a thin layer of contact cement. Let this get touch dry again and carefully line up each side with the core. Once I'm happy, I give it a good squash with the rolling pin, ensuring a nice even pressure. I let this set for a few hours, then with a nice sharp knife, I cut away at the edges of the outer foam to roughly form the shape of the blades. I then start building up the hilt and guard with foam and contact cement. If you are making the blade and handle separately like me, I recommend sanding the blade now before adding the handle. It's not a complete fail on my part, but just would have been easier to shape the entire blade now rather than later on. I make the grip by wrapping it in foam, so it creates a nice cylinder without having to go mad sanding. I apply contact cement to the core and both sides of the foam. I then stick the end, and using the workbench, I tightly wrap the foam around the core. I stop when it's as thick as I need and cut off the excess. The cut can be dremeled smooth later. I do the same for the pommel, but I ensure this is larger to roughly match the desired shape. I need to protect the end of the core, so using a roll of tape as a stencil, I draw and cut out two circles into the foam.
These will be doubled up to give me two centimeters at the base. Then I use a bit of copper pipe that I have dremeled sharp-ish and use this to cut a circle into the foam. It's more about friction than pressure. You can use anything kind of thin to press into the foam and rotate to cut shapes. With the added detail, this gives me a good 30 millimeters of protection from the core. Again, this isn't the striking edge, but it does prevent accidents. Then with a little edge trimming, the rough shape is more or less done. Then it's time to sand. A worktop belt sander makes the process a hell of a lot easier. I carefully shape the blade, taking my time to constantly check as I go. You don't need to press hard at all, the sander does all the work. If you feel the sander biting the foam, let go and keep your hands away. It takes a little practice to get used to, so it might be worth getting some practice pieces to get a feel for it. I use the Dremel for harder to reach places and for shaping the handle. Again, you've got to be really careful not to put too much pressure on this. The sander does all the work. It just takes a bit of time. Once happy with the rough shape, I move on to hand sanding. I switch between using sandpaper and the heat gun to get a smoother finish, gradually working my way up the grits. I then wrap the handle firmly with electrical tape. This area is going to receive a lot of sweaty hand contact, so it needs to be firm, and this helps to ensure the core remains firmly stuck in the foam over time. I then begin adding some details to the handle with some one millimeter foam. I add a strip around the guard, cutting away the excess to give a smooth finish. The join can be carefully sanded later to hide it. I continue to shape on the sander and with the Dremel, taking my time until I'm happy with the shape. There is a lot of back and forth at this stage, adding little bits of foam and sanding other parts, cutting little details into it. It's easier to take things away than it is to add them. Take your time and just work into it carefully. I wrap the grip tightly with hockey tape and then the shape of it is more or less done. I give it a few whack tests, make sure I'm happy with the details, size and thickness, and then we can move on to latexing. Again, following the advice of TTC Craftworks, I thin down some of the contact cement and apply this directly onto the foam to add a stronger bond between it and the latex. I've not had much trouble with the latex separating from the foam in the past, but anything that might give additional protection is great, and seeing as I had the elements already, I thought it was worth doing. I add some cheap black acrylic paint directly to the latex so that it also acts as a nice black undercoat when painting. Give this a nice good shake and then cut up some old foam to use to dab any areas where the latex might build up. I start applying the latex with my trusty fence painting spray gun thing. It subsequently jams, backfires and fills with latex. Thankfully, it doesn't make much of a mess and it doesn't electrocute me. I'll look into a compressor and spray gun down the line, but seeing as I'm only doing a few weapons at the moment, I settle on applying the latex with a bit of old sponge. This keeps the layers nice and thin and prevents brush lines. It doesn't take that much longer either, so if you're only doing one or two weapons, it's, it's probably easier to just use a sponge. Six thin layers of latex later, I then let it fully dry overnight. On to the painting. I'm using gunmetal flexi paint here, which I water down and apply with a brush. It kind of self levels, preventing brush lines. And whilst it's hanging, I make sure to dab away any buildup to prevent drips forming and setting on the tip. Again, this is a layer game and requires three or four to build up the color. Each layer adds durability to the blade, and keeping it thin will keep the finish nice and smooth. I then switch to Flexi Paint Silver and do two coats with the sponge. I paint the handle with a basic brown acrylic paint. This will be worked on down the line. Once dried, the Flexi Paint remains a little tacky. I use Flexi Paint Matte Finish to remove the tackiness and seal in the paint. And that's kind of more or less there with the paint. You can stop here or keep going. For the handle, I'm going to wrap it in pleather, which I cut into a long strip with a nice sharp knife. I apply the contact cement to the handle and the inside of the pleather strip. I keep it tight as I wrap it to help bind it with the glue and cut the end at an angle to simulate a taper. 
Dab on a little super glue here to ensure a nice firm bond. I then cut two little strips out of a slightly different color to act as little finishes to the wraps and to hide the joins. This is again stuck down with the contact cement and the excess is simply cut off. A little drop of super glue at the end to ensure it holds. I then wanted to add a little shine to the edge of the blade to simulate kind of looking sharp. So I thought I'd crack out the rub and buff. Carefully using my finger, I apply this to the edge and then I rub it and buff it with a cloth. Rub and buff has a great metallic finish, but it's not very flexible if it's too thick. You don't need to use rub and buff, you can simply use silver flexi paint or any other kind of silver acrylic paint here. It's just nice to get a bit of extra shine on the edge and add a bit of variation to the blade. Then I work on the little brown section of the handle beyond the grip. I want it to simulate a kind of wooden handle finish, so I use a few different shades of brown and then I wipe it with a sponge whilst it's still a little wet to create a bit of a grain effect. It's nothing too fancy. And that's it. I'm very happy with the shape, size and look of the blade. You can't feel the core from the striking edge. It doesn't feel clumsy. It stands up to wax and doesn't hurt. Well, it doesn't hurt any more than it should. I'll be coating this in Isoflex to give it a flexible clear rubber coating and ensure durability. But I'll be doing this as a batch when I've got more weapons to do. As it's nasty stuff, it ruins brushes and the less I can be cocking about with it, the better. I'll share a video on how to apply Isoflex down the line. There are many LARP systems around the world and many DIY LARP tutorials online. I'm not claiming to be an expert. I build mine to the standards of Empire LARP by profound decisions here in the UK. They must pass weapon safety checks and look and feel in keeping within the game. It is worth checking with your own system before attempting to build your own weapons, but I absolutely encourage you to have a go. Let me know what you think I should work on next. If you liked the video, hit the like and subscribe for more crafting videos like this. Cheers.